Alright, welcome to chapter 2.3 from the Think and Do book. Uh, let's see, this chapter, well, um, we're going to cover our z-scores. And basically, what this is, is that now that we have the a mean from chapter 2.1 and a standard deviation from 2.2, we're going to use those two to create something called a z-score, which tells you how far um, a value, a data value is from the mean in terms of standard deviations. So that's what a z-score is. And we'll get into more detail here in a second, but I would like to go to full screen mode. There we go. Okay. Z-scores. And the thing about z-scores is we use them here for a couple of things, but we will be using z-scores for the rest of this um, textbook. They, they're very common. It's how we measure um, we measure things in terms of standard deviations. But it really is just a measure of relative standing. You know, how far something is from the mean with respect to the standard deviation. And it comes in two different flavors of the exact same formula. If you have sample data, a z-score for a given value of x is x minus the mean over the standard deviation. Right? When it's sample data, x bar is the mean, and s is the standard deviation. When you have population data, a z-score is the exact same thing. It's the x value minus the mean over the standard deviation. The difference is really the notation here. For population data, we use population values. For sample data, we use sample values. Um, but the calculation the formulas is, is, is the same. Okay, so moving on to how we can use these. One example of how we can use z-scores is if you um, wanted to compare values uh, from different populations. For example, here I'm going to give the value of three different tests taken by three different students, say, in three different classes, where the means and standard deviation of the class tests um, change. And you want to see, you know, on which which score is, is the best, right? So when you look at A here, you have an 82. That's X on a test with a mean of 75 that's x bar here or mu maybe you're dealing with population data that's the mean the standard deviation is 4 and so that's the bottom part uh, okay so to get the z score you just take x minus mu over sigma and you get 1.75 so that's our z value um, for the your turn versions, we have a score of 95. That's x with a mean on a test with a mean. Class mean here was say 85. That's mu, the standard deviation, or 8, which equals sigma. So when you plug those into the formula here, uh, you get 1.25. So, so far, we have a 1.75, a 1.25, and then we um, look at another test, a 75, right, on a test with a, with a mean score of 80, standard deviation of 2. We plug that into our formula, uh, you know, z equals x minus mu over sigma, and we get a negative 2.5. So, clearly... When you're looking at these three scores and looking to see which one is the relative better score, clearly the 75 um, is out, right? Because uh, this 75 here is actually below the mean. At least on the other two, they were above the mean. So, so we know that's certainly not going to be the relative highest. When you look at these, though, this 82 is actually more standard deviations above the mean than this 95, right? Because the z-score, 1.75 for the 82, and the z-score for the 95 is 1.25. So while the 95 sounds better, and it is indeed a bigger number, 
Um, with respect to the mean, in terms of standard deviations, the 82 is actually a much more impressive score, if you will. But the 82 is the highest we're looking to score. All right, and so looking at this carefully, you should you should recognize that we're we're just doing we're counting standard deviations, and we've done that once already in the last section where we defined unusual values. In the last chapter, we said if a value lies more than two standard deviations away from the mean, we call it unusual. Well, now we have a way of counting in terms of standard deviations. That's the z-score. That counts in standard deviations. So the new definition, which is identical to the old definition, is here. unusual values have a z-score less than negative 2 or greater than 2. Right. We'll just do a few examples here. So we're going to... Um, go back to the IQ distribution. And I use that distribution not because I'm fascinated by IQ values, but because the mean is 100, and that's pretty darn close to true, and the standard deviation is 15. They're nice simple whole numbers. That's why I like it. Okay, so in this case, I'm, I give you five IQs and ask you to calculate the z-score and tell me whether it's an unusual or not unusual IQ. And we are using this information here. Mu is 100 and sigma equals 15. So when you look at A here, the z-score is 62 minus 100 over 15. All right, so you get a negative z-score. A negative is important. That says that this particular IQ, this X value, is below the mean. And in fact, it's 2.53 standard deviations below the mean. Um, so that makes this unusual. And it's immediately obvious because this number here is less than negative 2. Um, and now whenever you look at an IQ of 80, you get a Z-score of negative 1.33. Again, notice it's below the mean, so you get a negative value. But it's between negative 2, right? Negative 1.33 is between negative 2 and 2. And since that's the case, it's not unusual. And you go up to a z-score of 101. And notice what happens. When you do the z-score for 101, you take 101 minus 100 over 15.067. So that's really not unusual. In fact, it's close to zero. And what that means is that if you have a z-score close to zero, it means that the actual original value was close to the mean. And it clearly is. That is very close. Uh, 101 is pretty close to 100. So you get a small z-score. And the IQ is not unusual. Go to 125, that's getting up there. But when you do the uh, plug the numbers into the formula, you get 1.67. So it's it's 1.67 standard deviations above the mean. That's pretty high, but it is not unusual because it's not above two. And then when you look at 135, you get a z-score of 2.33, meaning that IQ is 2.33 standard deviations above the mean. That's bigger than two. That makes it unusual. So z-scores measure an original value or original um, score in terms of standard deviations away from the mean. If it's negative, the original score is below the mean. If it's positive, um, the original score was above the mean. And you can tell a little bit about whether it's unusual or not as well. All right, so that's a short section. Uh, we'll wrap it up here.